Welcome to a bonus episode of Hip Hop Movie Club. As always, here are your HHMCs Boogie, JB, and Dino Wright. Last month, the HHMCs took a field trip to the Grammy Museum Experience at the Prudential Center in Newark, New Jersey. For a limited time, June through October, an exhibit called A Hip Hop Life, celebrating five decades of hip hop music, art, and culture, and featuring the photography of brother Ernie Panicoli, was on display. We brought along two youngsters and we're interested in hearing the younger generation's perspective on their experience, their view of hip hop, and its influence on today's society and other topics. On this special episode today, we have Jay Prince and Iceberg, both rising high school seniors. Right, so first question I want to ask the youngsters here, how would you just describe your experience at the Grammy Museum experience and specifically the Hip Hop Life exhibit? Jay Prince, you want to go first? It was really cool. I kind of went in thinking it would be a little bigger, but I think they did a lot with the limited space they had. The, uh, the photo room was definitely the best part. There were a lot of really great photographs and seeing all those different artists photographed together really is, like there's a sense of community and hip hop there. And I thought the interactive elements were really cool. Like all the instruments you can play and the different like sing-alongs I had. Iceberg? I think it, it was a very cool experience. I love the whole museum and seeing the whole Grammy history and the hip hop area and Brother Army had some really great photos. I think it was very neat to see how all these legends of like the 90s that Brother Ernie was able to photograph. Nice. So which of the hip hop artists that were represented at the exhibit had you heard of before going? I mean, some of them like iconic, like you'll see Tupac, Snoop Dogg, like Snoop Dogg still like in the limelight today, but any other ones that stood out that you were like, wow, that's pretty cool that they were photographed back then? Uh, there was one of MF Doom. He was like in one photo with a few other people. I really like, I think it was the BC Boys or something. Was, I really like his music, so I thought that was cool. There's also a lot of Chance the Rapper photos everywhere. <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. Yeah, that was interesting. I think the one that stands out to me the most was seeing all the photos of Slick Rick, having um, heard all his music from a young age and then seeing all those historic photos were very neat to see. Yes, there was a photo of Slick Rick and Eric B with a whole bunch of bling on, if you recall, that was, that was pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Dino Wright and, and Boogie, any other pictures that stand out? We can ask your perspective too. Yeah, there were there were quite a few pictures that, that stood out to me. I'm a I'm a huge Rock Him fan, so anytime I see pictures of him, I go bananas. <laughs> um, also, I think one of the, the great voices of hip hop that's that's kind of keeping the, the momentum going, LL Cool J, such an iconic figure. So anytime you know, you, you capture young young LL on, on pictures. It's always good to see him because I remember those days when he was young and energetic and he did not stand still one bit. He bounced around the stage the entire time. <laughs> so it's always good to see him. Uh, there was another picture that really stood out to me too. It was a picture of some of the ladies of hip hop in particular. As I glanced in, in the picture, I noticed that one of my old neighbors uh, was in the photo, MC Peaches, she used to live down the street from me. So I remember her when she first got signed to a record deal. Um, it was a huge thing on our block. So seeing her and, and knowing that, you know, Brother Ernie actually captured her back then was pretty cool. I actually remember I have to send her that picture and, and let her know that I, I saw that there. So and get her her response for that as well. But yeah, those there was a few of them that that stood out. I, I can go on, but I don't want to yeah. ramble too much. <laughs> <laughs> that was really cool. And. Uh... Donna Wright, any any stood out to you? I also enjoyed seeing the MF Doom picture because uh, the picture that I I remember seeing, I actually took a picture of it, was him and uh, Third Base. And so back in the day yeah. when Third Base was having hits and stuff, he was still called Zev Love X back then. And so um, it's funny to think, I didn't know that he turned into this like incredible producer and I still listen to a lot of his stuff, uh, more so than Third Base, I think. <laughs> yeah. 
And there were a lot of good pictures. We were all fans of the Tribe Called Quest, and, and so there were a few photos of that in there. And much like the FMF Doom and third base photo, there's photos of different rappers together. That was really cool. It really did show that community that the youngsters talked about. Um, one was like Favorite Flav and Busta Rhymes and different mixtures of different acts. And it's cool. It really did show that you know, hip hop combines a lot of people. That's always good to see. Yeah, I like that too. And big shout out to brother Ernie Panicoli because the one Flavor Flav photo, a personal message about brother Ernie and how much he meant to the culture. And there was even a portrait of brother Ernie as well, which was neat to, to see he's part, a huge part of the history of hip hop. There's a picture of KRS-One who was a great leader, pioneer of the art. So many great photos. So I definitely recommend folks going to check it out while it's still there. Awesome. Let me ask the young guys again, Jay Prince and Iceberg, which hip hop artists do you currently listen to today? Uh, I listen to a lot of Kanye and then like Kendrick and Kid Cudi. But like there's some older ones I listen to like Nas and MF Doom, especially. I really love his music. Nice. Iceberg? Yeah, I'm, I'm really big on like Kid Cudi and um, Con like old Kanye music. I like, I've been in the yeah, Kendrick Lamar also, and I've been in the Tyler, the Creator lately, which is more of like a interesting take on the, this genre of music. How is Tyler, the Creator's music interesting? Like what makes it different or stand out? It's not, it's not like, like rap rap. When you think of like what hip hop has become today, which is more rap centered, it's more like melodic. Like it's more about the music and how you feel with it rather than the lyrics themselves. But it's very introspective. Cool, I like that. Anything to add? No, I mean, Tyler's like really creative and everything's just very interesting. Like, yeah, he's <laughs> Tyler the Creator. So I'll have to check out Tyler the Creator. I've, I've obviously heard of him, but I haven't really listened to any music. Have you guys listened to any of Tyler the Creator? Oh yeah. Yeah. I hear a lot of it. I got an 18 year old upstairs. And, uh, <laughs> For one 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 year for Halloween, he dressed as Tyler the Creators. Nice. <laughs> so yeah, I, I hear I hear a lot of Tyler Creator coming out of that room. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I do like Kid Cudi, so that's a great one. Um, do you think any of the early hip hop artists influenced the current hip hop stars? I think that's an obvious question, almost rhetorical. But if so, how and who? Like, can you? You know, you got, you listen to some of the older folks, and like, who do you think's influenced by the uh, the older folks? Um, well, I think like there's a real progression going on. Like, like Jay Z was in the '90s, and then he inspired like Kanye, who then inspired like the current generation of artists like Kid Cudi, um, X, stuff like that. Yeah. Anything else to add? I, I just want to point out, like, I think hip hop, like, these artists are always influencing people. Like, I remember watching an interview with Travis Scott saying how he got his name based on, like, Kid Cudi because he loved Kid Cudi. So then you go back, Kid Cudi is influenced by Kanye, and Kanye is influenced by these people. It's so all hip hop, like, is always influencing people, like, every year. Yeah, I think hip hop is really just about building on what previous artists made just like evolving the art form yeah definitely i mean even we talked a lot already on prior episodes of all the sampling that's done too so hip-hop itself stems from the blues r&b jazz there's elements disco rock and roll etc so yeah i'm glad that you know interesting that you guys see that we obviously love hip-hop that's why we do the podcast and we hope that it's still continuing to grow. It seems it's, in a, it's a good spot right now, but how popular is hip hop today in your opinion? Uh, I think we both agreed on this a little earlier that it's kind of grown, like rap has kind of become like an offshoot of hip hop. Like its roots are in hip hop, but it's, it's become more about the lyrics rather than the music so much. Yeah, yeah it, it definitely that's what we were saying before we started recording how it, I feel like back in the day with the early days of hip hop, it was more like an experience or something like the music and everything. It was all really well like put together and stuff. Now, like, I think they focus more on like 
lyrics and stuff now and just like not as much as like putting out like a good beat like a good sound so you think there's less kind of like one hit wonders trying to just get the catchy song and there's more meaningful lyrics yeah. Yeah. like if, if you look at like like kendrick lamar like his recent album mr morale that's like it's not club music it's like a narrative that's introspective and deep i agree interesting yeah that's good yeah it's in a good place um excellent so we see hip-hop as having a huge influence on many aspects of society like art culture even our language and i hear these youngsters using you know term bro and stuff like that and i've seen that on some of these early movies we watched even back to wild style break in break in two you know it's still such a popular influence in our culture. So how do you think hip hop has influenced all of these various aspects of our culture, art, culture, the music, uh, et cetera? Um, well, I think like one of the bigger aspects is like movies, like we're both big movie buffs and you can see it in like, like there's big movies coming out now where they'll have like a hip hop artist make an album for the movie, like Black Panther, Shang-Chi, they both had them. Um, Into the Spider-Verse had one. Chris Nolan even got Travis Scott to make a song for Tenet. It's just become so big that it's seeping into other aspects that you wouldn't necessarily think it would. I think, yeah, I think it has a big influence on everything in our society. Like, it, it has a bigger influence now thanks to, like, streaming and stuff. Like, if you look at, like, the Spotify, like, count on, like, a bunch of these hip-hop songs, like, they're ridiculous. Like, it, it's become so widespread and so, like, engrossed in the world now. And if you look at like, like it's even gone into like, like Broadway, like Hamilton is a hip hop play. And that was massive. Like that was one of the biggest things of the 2010s. Yeah, yeah. and it, it's been stated before how like Lin Manuel Miranda took like so many, so much like inspiration from everyone, like from Biggie and all these different people, each song and like even the lyrics are like borrowed and sampled in it. Definitely. And, and I still see, uh, influence in fashion as well and i see kind of sometimes a bit of a rebirth in graffiti and in the hip-hop art style of artwork and etc and i think as we've evolved as a society it's become less of a subculture and much more mainstream so yeah anybody else have any other comments on that yeah i think like you can't watch television today without seeing influence of hip hop. Just look at the commercials. Every like in a commercial break, there's either revamp of a, a hip hop song, or you know somebody's rapping in the in the commercial or dancing, even dressed the way they dressed in a commercial party scenes or cookout or something like that. You it's everywhere. I mean, it's it's global. I mean. If they wanted to escape it, we couldn't. <laughs> we were like intertwined with, with it. Yeah, and I am a huge sports fan. So I watch every sporting event that I possibly can. And I'm always glued to like the NFL network or the NBA network. And whenever there's a highlight montage of any sort, they're putting hip hop behind it. They're um, cutting into commercials with the hip hop. And it just adds so much extra juice to uh to that. I think like, yeah, that that's right. Because look at the halftime show last year with Eminem and Dr. Dre and all of the legends from the 90s. It, it's so it, it widespread to have that at the Super Bowl just shows how far like this has come and how, how much it influences everything. I think it's also become much more respected in terms of the larger like society, societal culture that we have where people don't really look at it as, a, as like a weaker version of music. It's just been so embraced. Yeah. We were just oh, talking shit. about that um, as we had reviewed Brown Sugar, where they were talking about it being a localized phenomena was, you know, they grew up in New York and that's where hip hop was and how far it's grown. And like you just said, how it is so popular that it could easily be, you know, it's a, it's a halftime show entirely made of hip hop. In the past, there was appearances from Travis Scott and others, et cetera, but this is entirely hip hop and it was so well received. Absolutely. Even last year or the year before, it was the weekend, wasn't it? Yes. 
two years in a row. <laughs> yeah, I mean, do you consider Weekend a hip hop artist? Definitely influence. He's not like direct hip hop, but he's, he's got definitely roots. more R and B. Yeah, he's, but he's, he, 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 yeah. But hip hop has its roots in R and B, so right. Yeah. yeah, so it's a wouldn't consider him a rapper, but there's influence and in everything. He's yeah, he, he's a hip hop artist. I think at his core. Mm -hmm. Right. Excellent. I think those are the different all the different questions I had for for the youngsters here. Do you have any questions for us? Who's your favorite hip hop artist? So my favorite hip hop artist is the Tribe Called Quest, led by Q-Tip. So, you know, I've heard all their music. I know Dinah Wright shares some similar of you and, and others, but let's go around. So, Dinah Wright, who, would you say Tribe Called Quest or someone else or a combination? The singular artist. I guess you can combine them into one person. I, I, they would be my favorite. Yeah, it starts with them as a collective. I'm sure, that's my, my favorite artist. Okay. I'd have to think about who it might be if it was just one person. Hmm, who would that be? Yeah, I would. I mean, if I said one person, I'd have to say Q-Tip, the lead vocalist for Trap Hook West, but there are so many greats. Uh, Boogie, who would you say is your favorite? Yeah, my, my favorite hip hop artist, I've actually, I mentioned him earlier, is um, Rakim. He single handedly changed the lyrical flow from quote unquote nursery rhyme raps to making rhymes multiply rhyme within a bar. <laughs> so he'd rhyme, like he said, rhyme, and it'll rhyme three, three or four times before he gets to the end of the sentence. And then he would repeat that where nobody was doing that before him. He was a legend. Any other questions that you guys may have for us? Um, I mean, I listen to like the classics and stuff, but I want to know, do you guys listen to like the modern day stuff? Like who's your favorite modern artist? And like, do you actually see like how far this has come? And like, do you listen to people like Travis Scott and like Kid Cudi and Kendrick Lamar, you know, like these newer guys? So I'll take it first. So personally, I haven't, sought out a lot of the newer artists and it's not that i'm just stuck in my ways but i do put on some spotify playlists and i've heard and i and i i do like some of kendrick lamar's songs i've heard of a couple of travis scott's but and kid cuddy but i haven't really sought them out you know i've seen and, and drake drake is super mainstream so i'll hear a lot of the drake stuff and some of it i like the newer stuff not so much how about you guys um down to right do you seek out the new hip hop artists and listen? I don't do it enough, I have to say, but I am seeing tomorrow at the time of recording this, Run the Jewels, it was LP and Killer Mike. So they're, they're, they're still performing. I don't know if they're, I consider them a new act because Killer Mike's been around forever, but there's that. I am a huge fan of one Kendrick Lamar collab with Flying Lotus. This is 2014. The song's called Never Catch Me. And I'm this might be the song I've listened to the most in the last three years, like of anything. Uh, the production, Kendrick's flow, the whole thing. Is, and the video is even more terrific on top of all of the song. The song's great. And I just don't repeat, but this video is just phenomenal. It's a, I, have to, I have to look up the guy's name who, who directed it, but... It's a it's a story in a, in a in a video. It's really terrific. So we'll put that in the show notes. Boogie, how about uh, yourself with the newer artists? Yeah, I mean, J Cole is my man. I've been a I've been a J Cole fan before his first album came out. The re up and the come up mixtapes. Those are certified classic in my opinion. His other albums that he's put out after being signed. I still listen to a lot of J. Cole. Kendrick is good. I mean, there's not enough words to describe the creativity that that man possesses and how he puts lyrics together and changes his flow, his cadence, slowing it down and speeding it up. And it's it's, it's, it's amazing what he's able to do. Yeah, he's an all-time talent. Yeah. I listen to um, Kid Cudi a little bit too. I don't listen to him as much as I used to. When he first came out, same same was with him. I had all of his mixtapes before his his first album came out. Even after his first album came out, I listened to a lot of him, but I don't listen to him as much right now. 
I do listen to some of the stuff on the radio. I try to keep my ear to the street um, in the mornings when I drive and I'll throw on some Hot 97 and 1051 just to kind of see what's out there. And a lot of times I can make it to work and from work. Sometimes I end up having to switch to Sirius XM to the Rock the Bells radio station. It's <laughs> my old school because sometimes it, gets a little, it, gets, it takes me a little too far off the path. <laughs> you know, I can't relate as much. But I, I do definitely try to listen to some of the new stuff because um, you can hear you can hear the influences. Like we were saying, how you know the, the original hip hop songs were all samples of various genres, and now it's like come full circle where a lot of the current songs are sampling some of those hip hop songs that from back in the day. And it's like, wow, you're sampling that song that I used to listen to when I was younger. And I remember where that sample came from because my aunts and uncles and my mom used to play the originals. So it's like, wow, it's, it's really going full circle. Isn't that funny? <laughs> <laughs> Makes me feel old. <laughs> I know. Now it's like watching sports and now the, the children of the players that I watched in the nineties are now professional athletes i'm like man i watched your dad play <laughs> seriously right i'm old <laughs> yeah, yeah man <laughs> yeah there's so many fernando tatis jr i mean we even go back to ken griffey jr right i remember watching his father ken griffey senior we watched all of ken griffey jr's career uh and ken griffey jr has a son that uh i think was a collegiate athlete as well so now we're up to three generations of seeing yeah. athletes like that I remember when I saw Steph Curry, and I'm like, oh, my God, I used to watch his father play. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> watch Del Curry play. Yep. Yeah. Right. Yep. Exactly. Excellent. There are a few, like, current artists I'll I'll hear if they come on on Spotify or, or just randomly, like, somewhere else. And, like, oh, that's pretty good. And um, so I really need to do a better job of, of keeping up with it. But there's a lot of rap out There's a lot of rap hip hop out there. It's, just, it's hard to keep up. Yeah. yeah. But I definitely drop with Shazam on, so that when I hear yep. something like I hit the Me Shazam, too. yep, and then I just come <laughs> home and I add it to add it to the repertoire. Yep, like Coast Contra, like those. Oh, guys. Coast Contra! Oh my goodness, yes, I forgot they're, about they're, them. They're like throwbacks. They're 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 really good. Yes, I forgot about them. Thanks for bringing them up. Oh my so, goodness, yeah. yes, they're insane. Eric Jamal, right? Yep. I, oh my goodness, I've seen some of their clips on Instagram, and they're yeah. they're amazing. That yeah. that one freestyle went viral. Woo! Yeah. Yes. Ooh mm -hmm. That man knows what he's doing. Took it back. <laughs> right. You know what's great too is is hip hop is international, and and I know these guys, the youngsters here, are huge MCU fans of Marvel, and we're watching uh, Miss Marvel, and you can see some of the Pakistani rap that was yeah. in that. And I was like, I love that. And we were talked about that on either one of our recordings or pre-recordings. And I started just looking up. I went down this rabbit hole of looking up uh, Pakistani rap. Then you used to look, look up other Arabic rap or Israeli rap or any country you can think of. And you could put, type in rap and you can see some pretty high quality stuff out there, which is really cool. Yeah, I remember there was this one female MC. I can't think of her name right now, but I follow her on Instagram. And I remember she's from a Middle Eastern country and it's slipping me. I don't know why I can't remember which country she's from, but I remember when women were given the right to drive in that country. This was like fairly recent, like maybe a couple years ago. She got on Instagram and dropped the freestyle of her driving in a car. And I and I saw that and it went, it went super viral and I went and followed her and I've been following her ever since, but she's really good. I don't know where what she's saying, but the flow is, is amazing. <laughs> Yeah, Instagram is really good for that. That uh, one MC Abdul from Palestine yeah. went viral also, walking through like rubble. Yes. <laughs> but really good stuff. Yeah. Really good stuff. You guys have any other questions for us? I have a question. Um, do you guys think that nowadays it's like there's more collaborations with like different types of music like artists from different music like i know like back in the day you had like run dmc with aerosmith for for walk this way but like now i see like you know like eminem and rihanna had like all those songs together and like uh, kanye's done songs with like some of these like pop stars like do you guys think that now it's like easier or something or like more like well received or like to see like these pop people or just every people from like other types of genres with like these hip hop people who wants to take that 
Yeah, I, I mean, I think I think it's definitely um, more apparent now. Um, I mean, from DJing, there's so many um, like clubhouse disco type funky songs that have you know hip hop artists rapping on them. Um, there's like like you said, there's collaborations with all types of R and B artists out now. A lot of times, the R and B artists are, are seeking out these artists to get on their song because. It, it adds to the flavor of the song and it, you get a hit like they'll have a you know the version that they originally recorded but you know nine times out of ten there's going to be a version that they put out that's going to have somebody rapping on it you know be it Meg Thee Stallion or Cardi B or you know someone like that or like I said you, there's like jazz fusion with hip-hop um I've, I've heard like so many songs like I, actually Common put out a whole album August Green, not not too long ago, mm -hmm. and that's yep. all jazz and funky. Like, yep. it's so melodic, but Common's voice rhyming over that those beats is just amazing. <laughs> so I definitely think it's it's more apparent now. Yeah, I think, like we had said earlier, that hip hop is a lot more mainstream now, and so you see a lot more intermixing of, of musics and you know, it used to be you know, some hip-hop songs they bring in an r&b artist to sing the chorus but now it's like flipped like they'll bring <laughs> they have r&b singers and, and r&b acts that have a rapper come in and, and rap the rap the chorus or something like that so yeah there's a lot more mixing and i think it's just gonna it's just gonna mix even more yeah and i think we talked about the Judgment Night soundtrack back in the day, which which meshed metal and hip hop, and yeah. you had mm -hmm. so many great artists. That was, that was an amazing soundtrack. If you look at it up, yeah. you had like Biohazard, you know, mixing with you know an oh, Anthrax nice. with you know it's just a crazy amount of collabs, which came out really so good. But to me, the least likely marriage would be hip hop and country, and that's been the mold has been broken there. You saw. Florida Georgia Line collab with Nelly, and that came out so well. And then more recently, Lil Nas X with Billy Ray Cyrus. So it works. It, it, and it's funny because you would never think country and hip hop could coexist, but you get these, these country fans that get that taste of hip hop. They're like, I kind of like that, and vice versa. And they're like, hey, it's not that bad. You know, it, it you can see some similarities. You can see how they can live in harmony. A so, lot of country fans like hip hop. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't yeah. mean you 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 only listen to one thing or, or the other. Yeah, it, hip hop and gospel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Got a whole mixtape of it. <laughs> 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 one of my friends from high school is a, is a hip hop artist. He was actually signed under Rockefeller with Jay Z years back. Some unfortunate accidents happened and. He had a revelation, and now he's a gospel artist, and he travels the country rapping, and he and he knows a lot of the gospel greats and in, in, in tours with them. Awesome. You guys have any other questions? Yeah, I, I have another one. Do you guys think that like experimenting with more like pop and stuff like could could be more like dangerous to the genre of like hip hop? Because you look at Drake's latest album, honestly, never mind. And it's just, I, it's just not good. And he tries doing like this club Hot take. dance music mix and it doesn't work. Cause to me, Drake is a rapper. Like he's a rapper. That's what it, that's what he should do. But it just, I don't know. It, I think he's trying too hard, like experimenting. Anyone want to take that one? I'm trying to think of my answer. <laughs> because someone <laughs> yeah. else could take it for, for a second. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I could kick it off. I, I think it is dangerous to stray too much from your roots and try to appeal to others. You know, you, you got to try to stay true to yourself. While you got to find that fine line between experimenting and going too far. You know, that I listened to a few songs of that. And it, it, it's been labeled as almost like elevator music. And, you know, that that's no good. And I, I've seen some of these earlier artists really upset about it. Like you are tainting, you know, true hip hop. So it, 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 it is a slippery slope, I guess, if you go too far. Uh, I I think Drake had kind of, be, like early Drake is really, he makes some really great hip hop music, but I think he had kind of become a bit lazy as the years went on. And then he's he stopped putting as much effort into his music. So he tried to make like a pop dance album and it really did not work out. That's probably the worst album I've listened to this year. 
<laughs> it's like it's not all bad it's just so like haphazardly put together like i like when artists try new things i know like kanye like he's a rapper but he does like different things album to album this just it didn't work and i think it's i think it is dangerous if you're like trying to mesh hip-hop and pop and it doesn't yeah i, I think you'll you'll hit the nail on the head you definitely want to stay true to your roots it's okay to experiment it's okay to push the limit but stay stay somewhat grounded to where you are and where you came from and just remember you know where you started at so you don't lose track of that yeah <laughs> I'm, I'm still trying to think of like it's yeah that that drake album it's it's definitely different people give kanye a bad rap sometimes but when he experiments it, you can still feel that vibe from it even with 808s and heartbreaks it's like it was it was so melodic but you could still hear the hip-hop influence in, in those tracks and in in like he made it like bass heavy and, and like you could feel it but yeah this 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 drake album it's uh very very pop dance <laughs> 808s, and, 808s and heartbreaks is such an interesting album because i know at the time a lot of people didn't like it they saw it as straying too far from what hip hop and rap were back then. But now you look at like modern artists like Juice World and XX Tentacion, they were really inspired by that album. That really is like, you can like, that's like a middle point in the shift between old hip hop and like some modern hip hop artists. Yeah, and your question was about, you know, going too much into pop. And that used to be the number one sin of a hip hop artist. You remember, Third base that you mentioned, they came out with that Pop Goes the Weasel because the Weasel goes pop. It was mm -hmm. a diss track against Vanilla Ice because they thought he was a poser, he wasn't real, and he was just trying to sell records and he didn't have that true hip hop background nature to him. But also, um, well, I mean, you know, Tribe Called Quest, we always reference them. And in one of the lyrics, rap is not pop. If you call it that, then stop. You know, so it's like, mm -hmm. listen, we are not pop. We might become more mainstream, but we're not pop. If we stay to our roots, you know, we're our own type of, of music. Absolutely. That one, Check the Rhyme, one of my favorite tracks. <laughs> Any other questions, guys? I think that's uh, it. I'm, I'm out. <laughs> no, well, thank you so much for your time and your perspective. It's great to see the younger generation. Again, Jay Prince and Iceberg, both rising high school seniors looking towards college. And uh, we hope that, you know, hip hop remains a, a big part of your journey going forward. Right thank on. for having us. Right. Yes, thank you. It was great. Thanks, guys. Yes, thank you for your time. Much appreciated. Thank you. That's a wrap. Hip Hop Movie Club is produced by your HHMCs, JB, Boogie, and Dino Wright. All music in this episode is by Boogie. Thanks to Jay Prince and Iceberg, and as always, Susan Berger, Tawanda Edwards, and Allison Yaris. We're on TikTok. Hit us up at Hip Hop Movie Club. Shout out to you listeners. Thanks for listening.